I would say laughter is a great way to start culture off. So any mistakes, we, we, can, uh, we can laugh at that. Okay. Um, Magadan Hampo Sain Lahat Komaska Ho Kato. So that's also part of my laughter. That's about as far as I go with, uh, <laughs> with my Tagalog, but I'm learning uh, each day. Uh, to get started, I want to really know why you came today. What was it that clicked in your brain to come to cultural transformation? So what we're going to do is we're going to have people walk to the table. And I want to get at least one. Uh, I want to get at least one reason, one person to tell me why they came here today from their table. Yeah, so um, I work for a company called Infor, which is an ERP software company. And uh, right now we are undergoing a lot of changes, good changes, uh, but at the same time, um, as leaders in the organization here in Manila, you know, I'm, the challenge is how do we, in fact, lead our organization to all these changes? And that's why I'm very interested to hear what you have to say. Hi, Keith. Uh, we are here because we are a growing company, and we want to make sure that uh, we build a culture as we grow, and we have a lot of new people coming on, on board as well. So that's why we're here. Great. I'm Brian from GDS. We're a very small company, but we're growing, um, in, my, in my feeling, rapidly. And we do software development and configuration of systems. And I mean, basically, my office is boring. <laughs> it's so quiet and so, you know, we have sick leaves growing as more people come on board. And I think it's just because it's boring. So how do I make it more exciting? How do I get people interested in what they do or in each other so that they collaborate more? Is that? Absolutely. OK. Great reason to come. Um, we're also in the midst of um, transformative change. And I think as a leader, I look to, f to bring about change that is sustainable. And I think the only way you do that is to drive, drive it through cultural transformation. So Great. looking to see what best practices you would have. Excellent. That's interesting, right? You said sustainable. Yes. What you find is a lot of people want a one and done, like a, a pill you get take from a doctor, right? You're not going to have a pill. It's going to be a process and it's going to be re reiterative. Yeah, we're from Collier, so basically we understand that each and every person in the company is very vital. So we want to ensure that everyone's inspired and we work towards one vision. And um, for us, this is the true ingredients for success. Hi, my name is Claire. Uh, we run a small Australian company that has an office here with more staff here than we have in Australia. Um, and I'm interested to know, building a company culture, how does it differ based on the cultural background of the people you're working with? So is it natural that our company culture in the Philippines will be different from the company culture of our office in Australia? Australia. And is that a good thing? Great. I've been through many transformations in my life. I was born in England. Um, I moved to South Africa. And as I was saying to Keith, that gives me, I think that gave me the biggest transformation of my life as a white South African. And uh, I recently moved to the Philippines, another transformation which I'm currently busy with, been here 16 months. Um, we're starting up a company here as well. Um, and uh, or getting it to grow. So there's another transformation in my life. So I'm looking for all the answers to all these transformations, really. <laughs> I'm going to give you a lot of answers, Sean. <laughs> so um, Pareto is a small company at the moment and is also undergoing some transformation. We increase within, within the next 12 months. The staff double it. Double it. And uh, we feel that uh, awareness when it comes to culture is very important to manage the growth. OK. Yeah. And we need, in a way, ideas about the tools even how to assess the cultural status we have now right. and where we want to go. So we are looking for a criteria as well to, to calibrate what we have now and how, where we move. You make an important point, right? If you want to know where you are, you need some type of assessment to do yes. that, right? And we'll give you a toolkit that you can use okay. to do that. Okay? Very good. But also, you talked about growth, right? So with this change, the cultural change, what keeps me up quite often is how will I have the right leaders to take me forward, right? Okay. Great. Okay. So we have at least 11 reasons why people came today. So. Let's go up to our next slide. Um, 
Here's my three minute, uh, less than three minutes, 30 second uh, preview about Cognizant. We are a global company, 167 people uh, worldwide. Um, we're growing at a rate of about 18% annually. And we've been in the Philippines only about four and a half years. And I've been with them about two and a half years of that journey. Um, and I'm, uh, it's, a, it's a great ride. I have some of my team here with me as well um, who are along for the ride. Okay, that's it. Won't talk about Cognizant anymore. So who I am is more important about how I shape this concept about cultural transformation and the need to it, the need for it. When I was in the Navy, I actually studied nuclear engineering, two years in school and five years repairing nuclear submarines. My undergraduate was uh, marine biology. And then I went and got this thing they call an MBA where we did a lot of finance calculations. So my whole brain is wired through data and measurements and statistics, not wired around people. In fact, none of my academic education or my business formal education prepared me for cultural transformation. There was no course that said, let's learn how to turn cultures around. There was no course that said, what, how do you willfully and with purposeful thought create a culture that's powerful? There were conversations around, should we have a performance management structure where we gave people feedback twice a year? There were conversations around team building. There were conversations about R&R, absolutely. But there was nothing that put that whole package together. And so over my, over my career, I've been working and tweaking to put that entire package together, not just my analytical side, but that whole cultural transformation and people side. So when I, heard you t when, I, when I heard you today talk about the reasons you've come, it is around the people, but giving you a willful, purposeful process to create that within your organization, okay? Most people, when they say, hey, so what is culture? It's just the way we do things around here. I tell you that's unpredictable, uncontrollable. You don't know what you'll get. It's just the way you do things around here. Can anybody describe the culture in their organization? We have people from all crosses of business. Can any, will anybody share with us your culture? Well, I describe our organization as, a fragmented, as having a fragmented culture. Mm -hmm. So uh, we've been growing, but uh, revenue's been growing, uh, growing 10 times over the last five years, uh -huh. and it's really through acquisitions. So that's the nature of our, of our group. It's really a, a group of several companies with different cultures. So it's, it's how I would describe it. It's Absolutely. fragmented. Absolutely. Look at your, look at your uh, on your table, there's a cartoon. This gentleman said fractured. Look right here at this cartoon. Does that remind you of your organization? That says, apparently many companies experience problems in including a lack of direction, poor accountability, lack of respect among members. This is often what we find in many organizations. There are six key components for the dimensions of culture. Dominant characteristics, organizational leadership, management of employees, organizational glue, and strategic emphasis and a criteria of success. These are six components that our assess the assessment tool that I have, sir, you had talked about uh, an assessment tool earlier. These are six characteristics of an assessment tool that will help you get a baseline to your organization. Before we get started into here, I always like to be inspired. Sometimes I have to do it myself. <laughs> Sometimes my team does it with me, but I want to get you a little bit inspired.
Just, you know, what I like about that video, besides it getting me excited each time, it is the ultimate multicultural video. Right? It, touches, it touches across the globe and touches across cultures. Um, getting excited is one thing. We talked about sustained excitement. So one of the questions was, I want to have sustained energy in my organization. So showing a video like this gets you excited for the moment. What we're really talking about today is how do we do this over a long period of time? So mission critical. Why is it important to have a culture that you create with willful and purposeful thought? Four pieces to take away. It's a competitive advantage for you. It aligns and accelerates results. It keeps your people with you. And I'm going to give you a couple of those within the Philippines. First, though, let's talk about some companies you may or may not heard. How many people have heard of Zappos? Great, great, great. How many, how, anybody, how many people can tell me the story of Zappos? What do they sell? Who said shoes? Shoes, anybody else? Shoes, shoes. They actually do not sell shoes. They actually sell customer service. That is their brand, that is their marketing strategy, is the power of their customer service. Started in 1999 by a guy, a guy named Swimber. He actually wanted to sell shoes, so he went out to stores, 